Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story. As proudly we hail a great American general, Stonewall Jackson. Our story is entitled Lightning on Horseback, a tale about General Stonewall Jackson, a great Confederate general who fought so courageously in the war between the states. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Today, your rapidly expanding United States Army needs intelligent young men with ability and ambition. Men intelligent enough to recognize the vital need for a strong armed force. Men with ability enough to be trained in a necessary job. Men with ambition enough to secure the future for themselves and their loved ones. Does this description fit you? Can you qualify? For full information on how you can fit in with the finest, check with your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station now. Remember, the United States Army, the senior service of our armed forces, needs you. And now, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production... Lightning on Horseback. He was quite a guy, Stonewall Jackson, who moved so fast with his whole army during the war between the states that nobody ever knew where he'd turn up next. Why, he'd pick off a section of the enemy and swallow them up whole. People got to calling him Lightning on Horseback, even when he was a young fellow, he learned how to travel fast and light. That was back in 1841. Say, I sure wish I had my gun along. Gun? What for, Dick? Look over yonder. On that fence, Tom. Three squirrels running along, plain as daylight. Wouldn't do you no good. We're on business. No time for hunting. Gotta take some time for fun. Everybody does. There'll be time for fun when we get these horses of Uncle Cummins delivered. No argument there. What you gonna be after a while, Tom? What do you mean? Well, most fellas are gonna be farmers, doctors, or something. What about you? A man can be whatever he resolves to be. <laughs> that don't answer the question, Tom. Well, you know that examination for West Point Academy I took a while back? You didn't do so good on that. No, but the fellow that did best is leaving there. So I'm going up to Washington to see Congressman Hayes. I know I have the energy, and I think I have the mind for it. Washington's pretty far from West Virginia. Yeah, West Point's further. But I'll get to Washington at any rate. I better speed up these horses. We want to be in Parkersburg before sundown. Thomas Jonathan Jackson, are you, son? Yes, sir, Mr. Hayes. You want to be a soldier, huh? Seems likely to be a good profession, sir. A lot of hard work involved, Tom. Huh? I've been working since I was six, sir. <laughs> well, you keep at it, I think you'll do. That's what I mean to do, sir. Now that I got this far. Well, young man, you have a good name. If anybody at West Point insults you, crash him well and just send the bill to me. Thank you, sir. Can I uh, offer you any entertainment while you're in Washington, Tom? Uh, no, thank you, sir. I just thought I'd climb the Capitol Dome and have a look at Washington, sir, before I go north. <laughs> New plebe coming in today, Hill? I asked Maury. He keeps track of such things. Another Virginian, gentlemen. What would West Point be without plebes and gentlemen from Virginia? Whereabouts is this one from? Uh, the Hill Country, Pickett. Almost a backwoodsman, I don't doubt. Shh. 
Well, if that's your man, it's backwoods, all right. Look at that homespun suit. Short as the walk. One foot in front of the other like an Indian. Something hard said about that jaw, though, gentlemen. I think, my friends, that yonder lower classman has come to West Point to stay. Warren, it's all just too exciting. Graduation week at West Point and all. Well, not only graduation week, every one of us is going right into action. You mean that war with Mexico? I never did understand what it was all about. Hey, Warren. Huh? Who is that serious boy with the burning eyes? <laughs> That's old Jack. Old Jack? Correct. Full name, Thomas Jonathan Jackson. Strange sort of lad. Why do you call him strange? Well, he's different from the rest of well, he's you. He's a mountaineer from Virginia. Was almost last man in the class at the end of the first year. I never saw anyone work as hard as he has. He's graduated 17th, and he'll be an artillery lieutenant. He doesn't look as if he ever had much fun. Maybe not. But if we stayed here another year, he'd be at the head of the class. Slow but sure. That's old Jack. Jackson, sir. Yes, Sergeant. Runner approaching, sir. Very well. Have him report to me. Yes, sir. Runner, report. Message from the commanding general, sir. Thank you. Lieutenant Jackson, sir. Your battery will move forward at once in support of the 4th Infantry, now storming the hill of Chapultepec. Signed, Worth. Hmm. Forward, men. Follow me. All right, men. At him. We can't make it, sir. The enemy fire is too strong. The men are breaking, sir. Give me a hand with this gun carriage, Sergeant. We'll drag it over the ditch ourselves. Men! Men, see, there's no danger! I'm not hit! Ready, Sergeant. A heave! A heave! There she goes! Oh, that's it, sir! All right. All right, now prepare to load. We'll serve this gun ourselves. Yes, sir. Load. Stand away. Ready? Fire! Yes, General. Why is that battery out on the flank so exposed? Well, they were sent in support of the 4th Infantry, sir. Go to their relief at once, sir. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Jackson. General's compliment, sir. You were to retire at once. We're holding them, Captain McMurray. We're holding them. Give me 50 men who are veterans and I'll take support the fact. I like your spirit, Lieutenant. Men! We want 50 volunteers to take the breastworks on the hill! There they are, Lieutenant. Let's go. Yes, sir. Fix bayonets! Follow me! Charge! Beloved sister Laura, I think back now and can only thank God that he preserved us and gave us victory on the hill of Chapultepec. It is doubtless according to his will that we are now in Mexico City, a place that contains mirth, beauty, fine manners, variety, and in fine all that man can reasonably want. I can report to you that under fire, my only fear was that I should not meet danger enough to make my conduct conspicuous. It is doubtful now whether I shall relinquish that military profession, as I am very partial to it.
What's this I hear, Tom? You becoming a professor? Yes, I've accepted the post at Virginia Military Institute. VMI, I see. Well, what are you teaching? I shall be professor of natural and experimental philosophy, and I am expected to teach optics, mechanics, astronomy, and artillery tactics. <laughs> Did you hear what happened to old Ramrod Jackson? What's oh, happened to the major? That's all over the campus. I knew he was a particular sort as far as we're concerned. You know, strict attention, no dismissal until the word of command and all that. Yeah, yeah. But he actually makes himself behave that way, too. Well, get to it, Bob. What happened? Well, yesterday evening, the superintendent asked him to wait a moment in the outer office. You mean the place where we wait when we're up for breaking rules? Right. Well, Major Jackson, if you please, sat down there to wait for the super. The super promptly forgot he was there and went out another way. And so? <laughs> and so our major of artillery, one Thomas J. Jackson, sat in that office all night <laughs> until the superintendent of the institute came back this morning to dismiss him. <laughs> <laughs> one thing about Major Jackson, with him, orders are orders. Oh, it's a shame. Things like this shouldn't happen to anyone. Not even to Major Jackson. No, not even to him. I know I couldn't stand it. Well, if you're gonna be a soldier, you have to stand a lot of things. What's losing your wife after you've been married only a year got to do with being a soldier? And the new baby, too. That's really rough going. You gotta be a man to go through something like that without cracking. Major Jackson's a man, all right. Beloved sister Laura, it is now three years since my dear Eleanor passed away. I do not feel that it is right in the eyes of the Lord for a man to remain alone too long. I have written you before of Miss Anna Morrison of South Carolina. I have been to visit with her, and she has graciously consented to become my wife. <laughs> Yes, my dear. Thomas, I'm frightened. Will there really be war between the states? I don't know. I really don't know. But South Carolina and all the other states... Yes, I know. And Mr. Lincoln intends to preserve the Union. Yes, but Jefferson Davis says that Union's only a federation of sovereign states. That any state has the right to leave that federation if it so wishes. And Mr. Lincoln says that's not true. What do you think, Tom? I think the Northern people love the Union and that they will prove it to us when they realize that we are in earnest about leaving the Union if they do not do us justice. What will you do, Tom? My dear, I wish to make every effort to preserve peace. But if Virginia is invaded, Virginia must be defended with a terrific resistance. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production of Lightning on Horseback. We'll return to our story in just a moment after this important announcement. Young man, let's talk about your future and America's future. They're important to each other, you know. Today, your United States Army is charged with a vital responsibility. You need only to glance at your local newspaper to realize how vital. And to meet this responsibility, the Army is rapidly expanding its forces. They have a job for you. A job that must be done by men of courage. You can get full details of how you may best serve your future and your country's future by a visit to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. Join the United States Army now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of Lightning on Horseback. Thomas, it's come. Virginia has seceded from the Union. If I know myself, all I am and all I have is at the service of Virginia. J. 
Gentlemen, these are my orders. The cadets of the Virginia Military Institute will entrain for Richmond at 1 a.m. sharp. You may stand at ease. 1 a.m.? Here we are all ready to go. Why don't we march? The Major said 1 o'clock, didn't he? Right enough. Is it 1 yet? No, but uh, why not make use of a few extra minutes? When Major Jackson says 1, he means 1. Not a minute before or after. You'll see. All right, I'll see. Regiment! Attention! Forward! March! Where's General Jackson leading us, Bill? I hear it's a stream called Bull Run, Johnny. The Yankees are on the other side. Well, from the noise, they're crossing over right enough. Oh, what's a couple of lads like us got to think about it for? The general know what's right to do. Yeah, after two months of doing nothing, it's time this brigade got into a fight. Hey, look there, John, top of the hill. We'll have fighting soon enough now. Hey, those are our lads. The Yankees got them on the run. General Jackson, they're beating us back. Then, sir, we'll give them the bayonet. First Brigade! Deploy in skirmishing order! You men, halt! Form your ranks! Face them out! Face the enemy! Rally, men, rally! Look there, at the crest of the hill! There's Jackson standing like a stone wall! Rally behind the Virginians! Hold on, men! Steady now! All's well, steady! All's well, steady now. We only had a couple of thousand more men. Here's the waiting. That's the hardest. General Jackson, the day's going against us. If you think so, sir, you'd better not say anything about it. Keep your eyes open. That cloud of dust behind us is Kirby Smith's brigade. If they reach here in time, we'll be all right. You hear that? If they reach here in time. The Yankees are coming closer, John. We're ready for them. Reserve your fire, men, until they come within 50 yards. Then fire and give them the bayonet. And when you charge, yell like fury! Now, that'll be a relief. Like you said, it's the waiting that's the hardest. Won't be much longer now. Now! Then now, fire! We got him going, Bill. We got him going. Look at him, Bill. He's right. Come on, Bill. My beloved wife, my Esposita, I write to you from my tent near the field of battle, for I must tell you that the glory of yesterday belongs to God alone. He made my brigade more instrumental than any other in repulsing the main attack. This is for your information alone. Let others speak praise, not myself. You say you think the newspapers ought to say more about your husband. My dear, my brigade is not a brigade of newspaper correspondents. So they made old Stonewall a major general. And so, Johnny, we lose him. Yeah. Stonewall Brigade won't be the same without him. Uh, we'll still be in his army of the Shenandoah Valley, I think they call us now. Yeah. But it won't be the same, anyhow. All in, men. All right. The general. He wants to talk to us. Brigade! Get! Get! I am not here to make a speech, but simply to say farewell. In the Army of the Shenandoah, you were the first brigade. In the Army of the Potomac, you were the first brigade. In the second corps of the army, you are the first brigade. You are the first brigade in the affections of your general, and I hope by your future deeds and bearing, you will be handed down to posterity as the first brigade in this, our second war of independence. Farewell. General Taylor, the Yankees under General Banks are at Strasburg in considerable force. 
There are now 17,000 men under my command in the Army of the Valley. We shall move north at once and cross the mountains to the Luray Valley. But General Jackson, I have just brought my brigade from there to join you over here. That doesn't make sense. Nevertheless, that is an order, General. Very good, sir. If I can deceive my friends, I can make sure of deceiving the enemy. War Department, Washington, D.C. Stonewall Jackson is still at Harrisonburg in the Shenandoah Valley. Signed, Banks. War Department, Washington, D.C. There is no danger of attack here at Strasburg. Certainly none on my main base at Winchester. Jackson will never leave the valley. Signed, Banks. May 22nd, 1862. To the War Department. I regard it as certain that Jackson will move north only as far as New Market. There is no cause for alarm. Signed, Banks. Dispatch this message at once to General Robert E. Lee at Richmond. Sir... Tonight, my men have completed a forced march of 60 miles in four days. I stand overlooking the town of Front Royal, well in the rear of the Yankees and of General Banks. Tomorrow morning at dawn, I shall attack. I do not believe that Banks has any idea of my whereabouts. Signed, T.J. Jackson. Butler, you are a member of the Confederate Congress. You can help me, sir. Anything you ask, General. Go to Richmond. Ask for reinforcements for me. I have retaken Winchester, but I am nearly surrounded by a superior force. There is one chance of escape. While you are on your way to Richmond, I shall try it. Don't repeat what I have said to anyone. Where is Jackson? Signed, Stanton, Secretary of War. Jackson has been reinforced to 35,000 men. Jackson has 60,000 men. He's at Port Republic. June 19th, Jackson is moving down the Shenandoah Valley. June 28th, I'm expecting an attack by Jackson any moment from the south of the Shenandoah. Signed, Banks. General Lee reports that on June 28th, General Jackson had been fighting McClellan before Richmond for two days and contributed greatly to the relief of that city. Hey, Johnny. Uh-huh. What you say the name of this place is? Chancellorsville, don't you know anything? All I know is this was some fight. Hmm. When you joined old Jack's army, you wanted fighting, didn't you? I saw him today. Yeah, I see. Yeah, about uh, 6 o'clock tonight, just before we jump. Cool as you please. Sitting on his little horse, looking at his watch. Last thing that Yankee general was expecting was for us to hop on him from the rear. He was sitting there watching General Lee in front. Thought the whole army was over there. And we strung around behind and hit him. You sure know how General Jackson works. I should. I've been with him since 61. Man, these two years sure have gone by fast. I've been all over with him. The Valley, Richmond, Fredericksburg, the mountains. Now here. I sure hope I'm with him a long time, too. Well, in war, you never can tell. Take Bill now. He was with me to load seven days in front of Richmond. You never know in war. What's that? Huh? Oh, just some of the boys shooting at chatters. Ain't a Yankee within a mile of here. Hey, you two there. Huh? Can you keep your mouth shut? Well, I reckon so. Then come with me. Another word. Someone's been hurt. Yes, right, sir. sir. Johnny. Huh? Johnny, it's the general. I told you, son. You never know in war. (laughs) My 
dear. You must cheer up. I love brightness in a sick room. There's... There's a message from General Lee. Shall I... Shall I read it to you? Yes, please. I should have chosen for the good of the country to have been disabled in your stead. I congratulate you upon the victory of Chancellorsville, which is due to your skill and energy. General Lee is very kind, but he should give the praise to God. Let us give him the glory. Let us cross over the river and rest in the shade of the trees. I fought for him while he lived, and afterwards, too, after he passed along, hurt to death in the black of the night by his own men in the wilderness near Chancellorsville. Perhaps if he'd lived, but that's all no matter now. We're all one country, all fighting for the same ideals today, for liberty, for freedom, for the right to live our lives in our own way. And somehow I can't help but believe that Stonewall Jackson, brilliant general, lightning on horseback that he was, striking at the least expected moment in the most unlooked-for place, was fighting in his way for those same ideals. How can he help but take his place along with Grant and Lee, Longstreet and Meade, Sheridan and Stewart, as another American hero? <laughs> Here's a special message for the young men of our country. The United States Army, the senior service of our armed forces, is expanding rapidly and needs your help. By enlisting in the United States Army, you'll not only get the finest training in the world, but you'll have the special pride that goes with wearing a United States Army uniform. And the Army trains its men in such interesting career fields as radio, radar, electronics, mechanics, meteorology, and many others. Why not get full details today? Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Enlist now. has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail.